Podcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, traders. So uh, welcome to the Bookmap uh, DX Feed webinar. Uh, we're going to be uh, looking at some uh, U.S. equities here uh, and data visualization of those equities. And um, the thrust of this webinar is to show you how to get a, com a competitive advantage right now uh, using Bookmap. And uh, by the end of this webinar, I uh, hope to deliver on that. Let's go over the risk disclaimer, trading equities, futures, and uh, equities and futures involve substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. <clears throat> okay, a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Bruce Pringle, a trader of 10 years in a variety of markets, order flow specialist here at Bookmap, lead at the Bookmap Trading Education. Uh, and then expertise in order flow and market microstructure. Uh, you can reach more information at our Twitter handle at bookmap underscore pro uh, at bookmap.com uh, as well as our YouTube page. Uh, look, look up bookmap uh, and reach out to us at support at bookmap.com with any questions. Okay, so starting off the presentation, get a competitive advantage now. Uh, that's a pretty, um, pretty bold statement. Uh, and how am I going to prove this? Uh, so uh, just uh, uh, jumping into this webinar uh, and looking at uh, the software, uh, how are you going to get this advantage? Well, this is what we're going to cover. Uh, we're going to be able to see all of the market liquidity uh, and full depth uh, of that market. Okay, we're going to read the order flow uh, in the micro and macro structures. Uh, we can use the dome on much higher time frames uh, in uh, in Bookmap. We're going to read the algos in larger players. That would be relatively impossible to see uh, on a regular dome. Uh, and then I'm going to show you some examples some, of some Bookmap traders. Uh, and then we're going to go over uh, live market analysis. And we're going to set some orders in the market too, because I want to show you some of the one-click trading uh, that you can do uh, with DX Feed Bookmap. All right, well, we're gonna start off with this chart here of Apple. This was uh, back on March 22nd. Uh, and um, just, there's a lot of things going on in this chart. And for those of you who are new here, uh, probably aren't too accustomed to this uh, uh, visualization here. What are we showing? Uh, but uh, this is where we're gonna go through the webinar and then we're gonna revisit this exact same chart. Uh, and hopefully uh, you, will, you will be able to read some of the basics here and understand how this is giving you advantage. Uh, where you can start to uh, anticipate future price movement based on what Bookmap is visualizing and telling you. Okay, so overview of uh, DX Feed Bookmap. Let's just start here. What is it? Uh, well, Bookmap is a is a platform, a trading platform. You can trade right from the chart, uh, and uh, right now uh, DX Feed integrates with uh, interactive brokers. So you can trade from Bookmap chart and have the transactions take place in your interactive brokers uh, trader workstation. Um, <clears throat> okay, so uh, Bookmap is a visualization software uh, that shows something very unique. Uh, and then DX Feed uh, connects Bookmap uh, to the US equities. Okay, uh, all of this allows for um, uh, uh, the an insight uh, that you're not gonna get through uh, other platforms uh, and um, uh, we also can connect to uh, futures markets as well as uh, digital uh, currencies as well. Okay. Okay. We're going to start off with a quick poll uh, and just want to gauge and understand how do you use the dome. Okay. So uh, let's uh, let's start this poll here. Uh, and um, if you could, uh, you can uh, vote mo multiple times or multiple categories. Uh, so uh, uh, see if uh, <clears throat> just get your feedback on this. So just looking for how you use the dome uh, rarely um, because you don't find use of it uh, or if um, uh, you're just using it for setting your, and managing your orders or uh, maybe uh, you're, you are analyzing uh, uh, just simple levels of liquidity um, and um, or perhaps you're, um, uh, you know, looking at it uh, very specifically uh, at um, uh price levels of, of interest uh, on a higher time frame, or maybe you're a scalper and you, you basically use the dome uh, uh, e exclusively. Uh, you're not using it uh, on, on any other time, uh, time frame, uh, not really looking at uh, uh, the candlestick chart at all during your trading day. OK, 
Okay, can you guys see this poll? Okay, okay, great. All right, well, uh, yeah, please uh, cast your votes here. And uh, when we have uh, something uh, a little more significant here, then uh, we'll, we'll stop. All right. Okay. All right. Good. Good. All right. Thank you. Um, just uh, a little longer here. <clears throat> this is good to know. Um, so it looks like uh, you guys, like uh, you know, some scalpers in here for sure. Uh, you know, using it heavily. Some uh, some uh, experts uh, in the dome. Uh, you guys are going to love Bookmap. Uh, and uh, others that are looking for just you know some simple insights at their levels of interest on higher time frames. Um, well, uh, I think we're gonna we're gonna demonstrate that pretty clearly for you, uh, and how to manage those trades uh, as well. I think is uh, uh, really gonna uh, be beneficial for for all parties here, okay? Um, because uh, you have the liquidity heat map in front of you, okay? In in uh, DX feed book map. All right, well, let's uh, end it up there. Uh, it looks like uh, kind of a, uh, a few heavy scalpers in here for sure, uh, and some others that uh, uh, most are, are dome traders here. Uh, so um, not finding a lot that uh, rarely use it. That's uh, that's good. Uh, that uh, uh, a lot of uh, stock traders uh, they um, uh, aren't really looking uh, uh, too heavily at their dome. Okay. Uh, anyway. All right, let's move on, uh, and uh, we'll, we can uh, close the um, close the poll here. Okay, and let's see. Okay, and you can see my screen again now. All right. Okay, so let's move on uh, and uh, start to talk about some of the market data here. Okay, uh, with DX Feed Bookmap, and why why the data is important. Okay. It's going to make a big difference here, and why is that? Well, well, first off, uh, most of the traditional charts that we're, we uh, uh, look at, uh, like candlestick charts, could be Renko chart, could be uh, uh, you know point and figure chart, really doesn't matter. Um, but uh, when you open and uh, access those types of charts, you're looking at aggregated data, okay? Uh, and uh, you're basically looking at only executed volume. Uh, and it's really just about 10% of the da data that's in that uh, uh, candlestick or in that bar. Uh, because, um, uh, you know, open, high, low, and close of the bar, that's what you're looking at. Uh, and um, for the most part. Okay. And then you, you might have uh, studies, uh, indicators uh, of the volume, of the time, and the price. But those are derivatives. Uh, so uh, it's really not uh, uh, chart data. Uh, it's some sort of calculation based on a derivative uh, of, of, of the time, volume, uh, and, uh, and price, okay? And in the end, I mean, really, you're only consuming about 10% of the market data uh, that's out there. Well, uh, what we show in book map here is 100% is of the data. You're still getting all the executed volume, but you're not getting aggregated data. We're showing you every single price uh, event uh, uh, that took place. Okay. And you're getting full depth of market here too. So on your dome, um, most of the time you guys are looking at uh, maybe 10 uh, deep on the uh, uh, on the bid and 10 deep on the on the ask. Okay, uh, using DX Feed Bookmap, you're looking at the full depth. Okay, uh, several dollars outside of current price. Those are active layers. Okay, so uh, that's uh, something that uh, is is extreme um, uh, advantage here. Uh, and uh, I'll show more of that in just a second. Okay. All right. And using that full depth of market, um, we are able to look at both current uh, and historical uh, data. And that's why I brought up that uh, uh, poll in the first place, because uh, most of us um, are looking on higher time frames uh, and not scalping. Uh, and if we are looking on higher time frames, well, what good is the dome? Because you can only use it for the current market. Uh, or just maybe recent uh, uh, historical market. Well, 
when we look at book map here, we're going to show you uh, the entire market. Uh, and uh, we'll, we'll go through some live uh, examples as well. So uh, no, no problem with that. Anyway, this triangle here, uh, this is uh, in, important because based on the data that we receive, that's the foundation because we're going to draw information from that data. Okay. From that information, uh, we're going to extrapolate knowledge okay, and make trading decisions. And then based on all of our knowledge over time, that, that leads to wisdom. So it all starts with the foundation here in data. Okay, so this is important, uh, and um, uh, so let's get into some of the, the, the distinctions here. So data makes the difference. Uh, basically, it's uh, back to that idiom: uh, garbage in, garbage out. Uh, so DX feed book map covers all U.S. equities. You get full depth of market, low latency. We have servers around the globe, uh, and uh, you have uh, some choices here for data. You can get Nasdaq total view and last sale. You can get edge, which is bats or edge X, uh, and you can get a combination. You can get both of those together, uh, NASDAQ and edge X. Anyway, I'll go over some of the pricing uh, details a little bit later. Uh, let's continue on here. And we're going to just start with a regular dome. And I'm going to go through this quickly so we can get to some of the live market uh, analysis. So uh, please ask questions uh, if uh, I'm going too quickly and want me to slow down. Uh, else we're gonna we're gonna go through this quickly here all right uh, using the regular dome uh, well it's good yeah you can see the auction uh, it you're able to optimize your entries and exits as uh, some of you guys had replied there uh, in the um, uh, uh, in the poll you can see the larger players you can see the depth of market uh, and uh, the professionals are using the uh, the dome okay now we're going to compare that to book map um, this is what it looks like in book map Okay, here's your uh, top of the book here uh, in your dome, looking at uh, Green Mountain Coffee. Uh, and um, uh, yeah, well, here's the bid at uh, 2464. And uh, I'm sorry, that's the, um, uh, that's on the bid side, yeah. And here's on the ask side here at uh, 2466. Okay, so a two, two cent spread. Uh, anyway, that's the top of the book. Here it is in book map over here. Okay. Here's your best bid and offer. Uh, you can see the uh, uh, best offer here is uh, this red box or rectangle. And then uh, uh, best bid is uh, here. Uh, this is your depth of market on the offer and your depth here on the bid. Okay, So we can, uh, let's just go through the, the, the depth on the bid. You see it here uh, in the dome. And this is what it looks like in book map. Uh, this is with Apple com uh, compared here to uh, Green Mountain Coffee. Uh, and then uh, on the offer, uh, here it is on the offer side, and this is what it looks like in book map. Okay. The disadvantages of this dome, I uh, was just mentioning it, there's no historical view. When these numeric values change, they're gone. There's no record of it. Okay. So that allows you, uh, or does not allow you, uh, to read the algos, uh, the larger players over time. Uh, it's, it's very tedious to read that. Okay, you're not, and, and certainly you're not able to uh, comprehend uh, micro uh, and macro structures uh, and put together the context of the, uh, uh, the story uh, between the uh, uh, buyers and the sellers here. All right, so the advantages with the bookmap dome, well, it's a quick graphical representation of that order book. Uh, we also have the, the consolidated feed. Uh, all together at one price level. Uh, and then uh, we can uh, very easily read the uh, microstructure and the macro uh, structure as well. Okay, so uh, let's uh, take a look here at some of the other elements in the chart. Um, uh, the, um, well, let me go back here uh, and define some of this uh, in the um, uh, book map chart. Okay, so here's your best bid and offer right here. Okay, everything to the, the right of this vertical white line, uh, this would be the current market. Okay, here's your last traded volume, uh, this number here, 40. Uh, and then uh, you can see the, uh, the, the uh, was it traded here uh, at uh, 186.27. Uh, this is Apple, right? Um, now, areas of high liquidity, okay? Well, where, where are they in the book? Well, it's all in the heat map. So you can see that uh, up here at 186.45, we see 3,600 contracts and then 2,200 contracts. But look at this area here at 186.50, the figure, uh, over 31,000 contracts up here. Okay, This area is dark red. 
Okay, so the the scale of the heat map is if it's if it's red like this, uh, then uh, that's the highest area of liquidity. Orange is next levels, and then uh, it goes down to yellow, and then white, and then blue, and then uh, black. Okay, so uh, that's how you can uh, start to understand very quickly uh, areas of high liquidity in the book. Okay, and uh, you can see, I mean, we're um, you know, I mean, this is a you know 25 cent move here uh, up to this uh, 186.50. Uh, all of this is live uh, in real time. Okay, and we can zoom out, and we're going to look at several dollars up to you know uh, 190 or whatever, uh, and uh, it will still be live. But what's interesting here is we take this data in the dome, and then we transpose it on the chart historically. So look at these striations here uh, in uh, in the dome. Okay, so it was orange, and then it was yellow, then it turned to orange, and and back and forth and back and forth. Well, that's the adding and pulling of liquidity. So when you see those numbers change in the dome, this is what it looks like okay, when it's been recorded and plotted on the chart historically. This allows you to start to read the microstructure. Okay. So for example, high liquidity here uh, on, the, uh, on the offer, uh, high liquidity down here on the bid. And uh, look at the sellers here. They come in and they, uh, they hit the bid. They trade through an area of high liquidity here. Okay. It comes back up for a bit. Uh, and then uh, uh, comes back down to test, retest these areas. We find more sellers hit the bid right into areas of high liquidity again. Okay, more sellers again uh, down into high liquidity down here. So we're starting to understand that, um, well, uh, this little structural area right here in the microstructure, we found sellers. If they're going to sell, uh, we're going to come down into areas of higher liquidity uh, to find those buyers. Okay. Anyway, more on the microstructure in a bit. Uh, let's look at some of the other elements here that I'm starting to talk about with the volume dots. Okay, So the um, uh, red bubbles here, uh, these are the aggressive sellers. This is the same chart. I've just uh, uh, made this a little bit bigger here, uh, and we can read a bit more of the microstructure. Uh, you can see that the, they hit the bid down here. Uh, the sell volume is are these red dots. Here we see transactions that took place right into and through high liquidity right here. Okay. Now the, the green dots here, these are the aggressive buyers. Okay. I'm not finding too many of them here. Uh, there are some scattered at, at some of these areas here, but the majority of the, sell, of the um, uh, transactions are taking place at lower lows. Okay. So we continue to hit the bid and go lower and lower and have price discovery to the downside into areas of high liquidity. All right, uh, we've covered the microstructure here, started to understand that. Uh, let's take a look at now, this is the same chart, okay? Now we've just zoomed out. The area we were just looking at was in, in here, okay? In this little area here, this is, uh, you know, some, some moments afterwards. Uh, and, um, well, uh, you know, a, a lot different now, uh, a whole lot different. So that was a move to the downside, uh, but uh, it was a pullback into a big cluster of volume down here, uh, and we start to rotate back up and start to find some buyers. Okay. Now, uh, you can see here, 186.69, here was that uh, 186.50, that would be that target that we were looking at. Okay. And um, yeah, so uh, they're starting to lift the offer up into those areas, and for this uptrend to continue, uh, got to get up into this uh, 186.40 uh, and then 50. Okay, a lot of liquidity on the uh, on the offer up in these areas here. But uh, uh, here's the 9:30 open, okay, and we're looking at uh, at 1:30 basically uh, in the afternoon. Okay, starting to understand a lot more about uh, you know what what is required here uh, to uh, to understand the auction uh, and who's in control. Okay. As we start to trade above this area here, around this uh, 186 level, as you can see right here, where they're providing high liquidity, uh, we trade through it. Come back, we bounce off of it. We look at all the buying that's occurring here. Uh, we're looking for price discovery to the upside to where? High liquidity here, here, and here. These are targets. Okay, And we trade right into them. Okay. Totally absorbed up here at 186.50. That's why we get the pullback uh, and then looking for uh, a, a retracement maybe back up into this area here. Anyway, the point is 
now we understand where that high liquidity is, we can use it on much higher time frames. Okay, and look at a macro view here. And that's going to be your advantage. All right, so for example, let's look at uh, this uh, chart of Disney. Uh, pretty stark contrast here. Uh, they're down here at 101, the figure, and they're up here at 102 on the offer, okay, with 25,000 contracts. Okay, not a whole lot down here. I mean, it's uh, uh, around eight uh, or seven, 7,200 down here. It was probably more uh, over in this area here. But they transacted. They trade into that area. They took all of that liquidity, all the sellers. They were able to go through a bit, but uh, that was it. They started to rotate back up. Uh, we still sellers are here. You can see the color of the of the dots, but uh, uh, they're just not able to uh, 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 hit the bid and drive it lower. And, and instead, the buyers come back in again, and they want more uh, at 101. And look at the reaction here. You found buyers. Okay. And uh, starting to, uh, uh, you know, some of these sellers may be starting to flip out and cover a little bit of a short squeeze. Okay. We rotate back down to test these guys. We trade into them. Transactions occur here. And uh, we, we trade through, but uh, not by much. Uh, and then uh, uh, start to come back up and find buyers again. Okay. Now, uh, we can see that uh, we're kind of in a range here, this bigger range. Uh, and uh, there's, you know, buyers are, are showing up here and, and lifting the offer. Uh, but once we get up above this range here, we see a distinction and a change in the order flow. Look at the volume over here. Okay. And look at how there, there is more aggressive buying at higher highs here. Uh, and uh, these guys are still down here at 101. Uh, they want more if, it, if they can get it. Uh, and instead, what, what happens here? Well, we're targeting 102. Uh, because uh, that's where the liquidity is, and this is where the aggressors are going to drive price to uh, find that liquidity up here at 102, and it did trade up into here. Um, all right. Oh, uh, one thing about this uh, uh, reversal that we're starting to see uh, unfold here of, you know, more aggressive selling at some of these areas, but then finding, starting to find buyers, uh, is, um, well, we can start to understand now patterns um, on much higher uh, time frames uh, in terms of order flow okay shoulder head shoulder for example and we're understanding it, though in terms of order flow and liquidity well transactions down here because there is high liquidity they're still here they're starting to find buyers now and uh, and they're still here right on the on at 101 to buy okay? sellers could take it lower here in this they have the opportunity to but they're they're being absorbed, okay. So uh, if if price if those sellers are being absorbed, well, it, you got to find new sellers uh, to be able to drive this lower, and we don't. So you you can understand why uh, you get you get these shoulders like this, and why you get this head down below, okay. And then we see this follow through up here, and especially up here. I mean, uh, we're getting pretty good insight that we're going to come up and trade into 102. All right, uh, we can also start to understand the context of this liquidity uh, and um, uh, with um, areas of, of support and resistance. And you can see it very clearly here in, in Facebook, okay? Here's our 930 open, and uh, we're gonna go over this in, in a, a few minutes. Uh, look at the open here and look at the, what you get with full depth of market, okay? Price opened around this uh, 79, 179.60 area. Well, here they are on the offer at, uh, at 180, 181, 182, and 183. Look how the buyers come in, uh, lift the offer up into these areas here. Target is the high liquidity on the offer. It's acting as resistance here, and we pull back. And these guys that were here at 180 flip over onto the bid side, and they're here providing liquidity at uh, 180. We trade up into target reached here. We continue on. They flip again. Uh, you can see them on the uh, from from offer to bid here. So what was uh, basically resistance is now support. Uh, targeting uh, 182. Buyers in control, lifting the offer. Target reached. Uh, final target here uh, would be um, uh, this uh, 183, which was reached. Okay. Anyway, some nice examples here, and you'll see it uh, especially with these uh, equities 
uh, again and again. Okay, what about absorption uh, and exhaustion? We're going to talk about that. Okay, well, this is what absorption looks like. Okay, very, very high liquidity up here uh, and um, 52,000 shares uh, in, uh, in Facebook. Uh, trade right into it. Massive transaction uh, takes place here, uh, but uh, is just shy of the amount uh, of this high liquidity. 52,000 shares, and it's, uh, it was basically uh, 50,873. So they weren't able to uh, 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 trade through uh, the buyers okay, at 183, the figure here. Okay, so uh, still several, uh, you know, I mean, we can see basically it looks like um, they even added more in here. So about 3,900 contracts still remained here at 183. Uh, and um, buyer buying pressure here completely absorbed. So it has to rotate lower because uh, there's no more buyers. Uh, and we start to find here, you start to find the sellers, they're starting to hit the bid, and they're targeting down here some of these areas of low li lower uh, or higher liquidity at lower levels here, okay? And at, where is that? 182.50 uh, is uh, right down here, uh, in fact, okay? So uh, starting to understand absorption uh, and uh, where price might go. Uh, let's look at... Um, Again, absorption here in Apple. Uh, this was uh, just uh, back on uh, 10 May, and uh, you can see that uh, uh, 327,000 shares right up into it, completely absorbed. They're still in the book here. Uh, price has to go lower to uh, uh, to find those buyers. Uh, it's coming down into an area here uh, where they initiated this move to the upside. Okay, so uh, uh, looking for uh, maybe around this 189.50. Uh, area uh, for uh, maybe buyers to come back in. Anyway, just showing the absorption and uh, where it might go uh, based on the absorption. Okay, uh, the opposite of that exhaustion. Let's go over that. Okay, so uh, here here's the um, uh, you know higher highs uh, into these areas of high liquidity. But look at the pullbacks. Okay, uh, there's really not much liquidity. It's kind of dark on the other side here. Right? Well, because there's just no interest. Uh, all the buyers are are uh, they're they're in uh, and uh, up at these levels here, on these pullbacks here, we're, we're just not finding uh, sellers at all. It's exhausting out on the sell side. No one's interested in selling down here, or here. Okay, so where do we go? We rotate back up to where it can transact because that's where it transacted heavily uh, before, uh, looking for areas of high liquidity. Uh, and uh, 1606, 1607, uh, for example. Okay. Now, uh, because we record all of the um, uh, data uh, from the dome, well, uh, the um, a lot of the uh, algorithmic behavior uh, it can stick out like a sore thumb. Okay. The larger players are, are definitely sticking out. I think you guys can see uh, that pretty pretty clearly here. Uh, so uh, the larger players with these areas of high liquidity, usually at the figures, big figures, we're looking at Amazon here at 1600. Uh, and then look down here, though, on the bid, 1598. And then just above that here, very high liquidity. It's only in here for a bit. Then it pulls, adds higher, pulls, adds higher again and again and again. This is an, it's called an ignition algo. Okay. Uh, they are uh, uh, pulling and adding higher very, very quickly okay, and getting very aggressive. Here's the best bid. This is the spread in Amazon, huge spread, of course. Uh, and then here's the best offer. And then look at all of the volume. Where is all the volume trading? Well, it's on the offer okay, by the aggressive buyers. Targeting this area here at 1,600. But the ignition here, the ignition algo is trying to press it through 1,600. Okay, there's kind of squeezing this market, showing a lot of demand down here, uh, combined with uh, the aggressive buyers, uh, combined with them pulling at 1600. Looks like we're going to trade through, and we did, okay, to the upside. All right, uh, skew of the book again, algorithmic activity. Uh, you can see it very clearly in here. Uh, this is uh, J.P. Morgan. I, we, we're looking at uh, 114.50 up here, very high liquidity. And then an algo comes in here, uh, gets more aggressive with uh, higher liquidity on the offer at lower levels. 
the pull, add lower, pull, add lower, pull, add lower, and get very aggressive. 8,800 shares down here, uh, and you can see how it it has an effect on price. Okay, as price is not willing to uh, take these guys on. Okay, a lot of supply up here, uh, and we're not finding the, the buyers to take them on. All right, um, I got to hustle up here. Uh, we're at the half hour mark. Um, all right, liquidity uh, in terms of uh, economic data. Well, we can also see that today uh, since uh, uh, we have um, had some geopolitical tensions uh, back and forth. Uh, well, uh, here's the same thing uh, back on March 22nd, about the uh, same uh, exact uh, event as today, uh, tariff protection uh, and China. And uh, look how it affected uh, Tesla. Okay. And this makes perfect perfect sense. Okay. Now look how uh, right at this area here is where the news came out. Okay. And it was bullish. I mean, we see the aggressive buying come in here uh, and move it uh, or, you know, take place. And it starts to move to the upside. Uh, and then look here when they, the buyers really start to get in. And this is a very strong auction, bullish auction to the upside. Okay. These guys are pulling high liquidity at these areas here. Uh, where's the target? Where is someone based on this? If they're going to start pulling their liquidity in these areas here because uh, of this uh, uh, geopolitical news, well, someone's still evaluating this stock and they think it's worth selling up here. And, you know, these evaluations are, it, it takes millions of dollars uh, for some of these larger players uh, to evaluate uh, what they think the uh, the stock is worth, you know, it takes teams of people. Well, you're actually getting that data for free here, because here they are in the book. This is what they think it's worth. Okay, right up here at uh, at 320 and uh, basically 10 cents. Okay, trades right up to it. All right, actually trades up into uh, someone kind of front ran this area here around this 118.50 uh, uh, or 75 something like that, uh, and then trades up further up into this uh, uh, 320 area. Okay. Now, based on this same news, take a look at Apple, and it goes down. Same event. Why? Well, a lot of the uh, assembly uh, of uh, uh, iPhones and uh, Apple products is in China. Okay. A lot of the parts uh, might be coming from China. Okay. That's going to hurt Apple. And you can see the the, the same uh, same event, uh, two different reactions uh, for two U.S. companies. If you want to consider Apple a U.S. company, All right? So the move to the downside. Now this move to the downside though isn't so uh, clean and sure like that move up in Tesla. Okay, but still again uh, we're getting insight uh, down here around this 174. That's where people think uh, uh, the larger players are willing to stay in the book. Even though everyone else, you can see how it's all dark in this area here. Okay. Now, once we trade through 175, the, the sellers jump in on the other side, 54,000 contracts up here uh, at 175. And this is where they're willing to evaluate uh, what Apple is worth to sell. Okay. Buyers down here at 174, sellers up here at 175. All right. Now, I'm going to take that same um, uh, concept of understanding uh, what an instrument is valued at by larger players. And we can see that here at the open, at the market open. So for example, here's our 930 open right here, this big yellow uh, line pointing at 930. Okay, this is uh, Amazon. Uh, and uh, look how larger players have already been in the book for several hours. You know, this is what they, for the day, uh, they, are, they are already positioned. Okay, up here at 1580, 1570, uh, 1545, okay, and some here at uh, this 15, like 52 area. Okay, uh, well it traded through here at uh, this uh, uh, 1565. Okay, so that's pretty bullish, and this is pre-market. Okay, and we're going sideways here now, based on on this move to the upside and tra trading up into this 1570. We'll be looking for that area here to trade. Uh, ultimately, you'd be looking for the target here at 1580, okay, at this 930 open. 
Okay. That's where we're going to either come up to these areas here or we're going to see some sort of reversal uh, take place uh, and trade maybe through uh, this uh, 1565 area. And if we see enough sellers, we can get down to 1545. Well, what occurs uh, is uh, here's our 930 open again, okay, here. Uh, and what occurs is, uh, well, we trade up through uh, that 15, uh, 1570 here. Yeah. And, um, No, actually, it is here. Yeah, it is here. Okay, we trade through it. We do get a pullback, okay? A little bit of a pullback. Find some sellers, but they're not able to take it further below where they initiated on that buy side. Uh, we start to find buyers come up and uh, make higher highs. Targets are, are really, really straightforward, okay? Actually, you can see they come in at 75 here, 1575, and then uh, 1580, uh, which, was, uh, which was reached, okay? All right. Now, a few of um, our uh, traders here uh, using Bookmap. Well, here's one trader. This is what he did. Uh, he is looking at SPY. Uh, he's starting to note how uh, price is coming down in SPY. On a, this is a five-minute chart. Okay. So if price is coming down on SPY, uh, then uh, he's, he's looking over at the VIX, uh, and um, uh, the VIX uh, should be going up. All right. Well, uh, instead, he's noticing here a wall of liquidity in Bookmap, looking at the VIX, uh, and um, uh, and price is coming down. So something's wrong here. Something's mispriced, okay? Uh, because the VIX should be going up if price is going down. More volatility uh, in that index, uh, and uh, uh, instead the, he he sees this as an opportunity, okay? So uh, what does he do? Uh, well, he jumps in uh, and he buys. Uh, uh, one uh, S&P E-mini uh, option here, uh, one call. Uh, you can see at 255 here, uh, and uh, at, at 1325 he bought. Okay, waits for price to to uh, start to uh, come in line with its evaluation in the VIX, back up to the top of this range here. And uh, he looks at the VIX, and uh, now the VIX is going down uh, in line um, with. Um, uh, the uh, uh, price coming uh, back up, okay, and uh, into areas of higher liquidity down here, and he decides to cover. He's only in there for six minutes, okay, and is, has made a buck seventy-five uh, on his option, or you know, per option, uh, he's looking at a uh, you know, profit of uh, one hundred seventy-five bucks for six minutes, okay. It's just one option. Um, all right, here's another uh, trader looking at VTVT, uh, looking at some of these penny stocks. Uh, he sees the move up into an important area here at 150, okay? Uh, important level here. Uh, he sees a lot of volume trading up above 150, right? But he sees the liquidity here really start to come into the book here. I mean, you know, look at these areas of very, very high liquidity supporting price. They want to be buyers above 150. There's no question about it. And here's what it looks like. Okay. And uh, waiting, he's just waiting for this to uh, uh, to fill some of these areas and waiting for the, uh, the, the buyers to come in. And here they come in this little pop to the upside here. Uh, he notes the buyers here, the buy volume, as you can see. Uh, he's looking to get into some of these areas here on these on the small little pullback, looking for that continuation to the upside. All right. Okay, so those are some of the things uh, that uh, uh, just visualizing larger players, uh, algos, uh, seeing full depth of market, uh, being able to, to uh, understand how larger players are evaluating uh, uh, specific uh, instruments uh, and looking at some examples of, uh, of bookmap traders. Uh, and uh, when you start to understand that context of the uh, the auction, uh, the buyers and the sellers uh, in that marketplace, uh, as well as where they're uh, willing to take transactions uh, based on the supply and demand uh, from the buyers and sellers, uh, now you have an advantage over your other traders, okay? Because they're not able to use the dome uh, on those higher time frames like that uh, and, and see uh, all of that algorithmic behavior like that. Okay. So let's jump into some live market analysis, uh, and uh, uh, you know, uh, yeah, we'll come back and, and take a look at this Apple chart here as well, uh, and start to uh, uh, read it. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll jump over and 
take a look right here at uh, Apple in the current market, okay? All right, well, uh, th this was the uh, same geopolitical tensions, basically, and the move to the downside, okay? Well, uh, here's pre-market. Here's our 930 open. This is where they're layering in already. We already know this information. Um, look at where they were. Okay, let's just zoom out vertically a little bit more. Very high liquidity up here at 189. Okay, and they're still there, right? 57,000 contracts still there all day long. They've been up here. Okay. And uh, where were they on the bid? Well, they, they were showing some interest down here, okay, at uh, 187 and then 186 down here. Okay. Well, we trade into these guys here at 187, trade lower, uh, 187.86.50, trade through that, uh, start to come back up though. Uh, and then look at some of the targets starting to layer in here. Okay, uh, on the upside, right above the swings here. Okay, looking for uh, any of those uh, weaker hands that are going to be pl placing their stops in these areas, and the larger players are are already waiting uh, with high liquidity, willing to provide it at some of the swings. Okay, uh, those would be some of the targets on the way up. Uh, they absorb it, pulls back. Uh, we we see the breakout here. More volume comes in, and uh, let's just zoom into this area here. Okay, and this is what it looks like. And this is what they're, they're lifting the offer and then breaking above this area here. Uh, here's your strong uh, volume. Let's make the dots a little bit bigger so we can see it. Okay, so it takes a lot of volume to lift it up out of this range here. We get that, okay. We come up to this area here, we get it as well, up into uh, our um, uh, 188 level here, okay. That was absorbed. It was, uh, pull, get our little pull back here and kind of go sideways. And then again, they come in on the buy side. Okay. Targets are really easy to see here. 188.50, uh, 188.80. And I'm still, you know, let's see if we can get up there to this uh, maybe 189 for the day here. Okay. Still, still a lot of day left. Anyway, uh, that's a, a look at Apple. Uh, anything else uh, you guys want to take a look at here? Um, Alibaba. Uh, you know, some of these are, it's interesting to see some of these uh, playing a little bit stronger or weaker. Okay, this has already come to, as you can see here. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, the, this was a sharp move up into this uh, uh, 199.50 area here. And then it's moved back down and it has not come back up to the top again. All right, let's uh, take a look maybe at uh, some at Facebook. Okay, now we're looking at very high time frames here and being able to see very clearly. I mean, here, look at Facebook just traded into 186 here, as you can see. A lot of transactions, okay, a lot of sellers uh, down in this area here. And uh, but we're, uh, we're rebounding out of that area. And uh, looking for uh, 186.20 here, because that's where the liquidity is. And I like that area too. Uh, why? Because this is where we broke from here and then we, they initiated on that sell side. And that's why we're seeing other traders are thinking the same thing. They're up here at 186.20. Uh, How about Twitter? Twitter's kind of all over. But again, we okay, here, here's some of those larger players we can see in here. Uh, you know, showing some interest in here, but they're really not that interested because it's shorter term high liquidity. Okay. But look how we, we, uh, we trade up into okay, above the swing here, okay, above this little area here. And uh, we see them, uh, you know, uh, They've been raising the bid in these areas here, these little pockets. And the aggressive buyer continues to uh, lift the offer up into these areas of high liquidity, but they never take these guys on at, at 33.55. Okay, we come back down and these guys still show in here. Now this has got to be the same player, very high liquidity here, okay? Uh, 5,400 plus contract uh, shares, pulls, 
and then adds uh, a couple cents higher here. Okay, reaction to price was to come up and finally get into that higher liquidity up here at that uh, 55 area here. How do these guys behave up here? Did they want to trade? Well, here's our answer. Like um, uh, you know, over here, here we can use the data tip tool. Uh, we have uh, 7,500 contracts here or shares. Well, look, they started pulling. Okay, in the end, what traded up here? Uh, well, let's see. It was about uh, uh, yeah, not bad, not bad actually. Um, let's, let's zoom in here a little bit quicker. Yeah, okay. So uh, they are trading. Okay, they 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 were they were not showing interest. They were starting to pull, as you can see in these areas here, right? But in the end, they stayed in the book. Okay, and uh, here here the here the the number of uh, shares that actually traded here is um, almost 12,000. 12, okay, so they stayed in the book. They wanted to be sellers up here. Okay, and uh, we we trade one more time uh, up a little bit higher into higher liquidity up here at thirty three fifty eight. And this is what uh, uh, we see transact up here, uh, just uh, you know about 5,500 contracts or shares, and uh, uh, not finding the buyers up here, not enough, right? Start to rotate lower, find these sellers, uh, and um, uh, yeah, price has been absorbed, or the uh, buyer buying pressure at this point has been absorbed up at uh, 58. We're starting to rotate lower, and then they get it, get pretty aggressive here on the offer. Okay, so that's the that's that little peak high here, and uh, why we're rotating lower now. Anyway, this kind of analysis we go over uh, every day uh, in our um, uh, a book map um, advanced order flow webinars. Okay, most of the time we're looking at futures, but we do look at stocks as well. Uh, so uh, we do this in real time. Uh, in fact, we were looking for a move to the upside uh, earlier today in the uh, uh, NASDAQ e-mini uh, and um, uh, and yeah just uh, just very objectively going through and reading the auction and the transactions together all right all right well uh, not seeing a, not too much at the moment here um, any questions that you have okay uh, questions question and answer session here let me show you a few different things um, where there's more that you can find here at this uh, DX feed, and I'll put this into the chat for you. Okay, there you go. Uh, now you can just scroll down here, and there's uh, more uh, FAQs here, as you can see. If you want to get into some of the costs, uh, etc., cetera, um, how do you subscribe, um, you know, the different uh, combinations, etc. cetera. All right, and uh, I can show you here as well. Um, how to uh, how to get DX feed book map uh, just go to bookmap.com okay and then here um, you'll you'll scroll down to the uh, packages area here and uh, you're, you're gonna need the global or global plus version and you can subscribe monthly or yearly whatever you like okay uh, but this is the this is the version you're gonna need one or the other here now go through the payment process now the next step is to log into bookmap.com uh, after you've uh, purchased uh, your subscription and then click on add-ons here okay and then this is where you'll you have to subscribe to DX feed at that point okay and then you will uh, after you click on that this will be your choice here for your subscriptions uh, you can get the NASDAQ uh, depth here for $69 uh, it includes 24 hours of historical depth data as well or you can get the um, edgex uh, depth as well uh, or uh, right now the special that we're offering is the uh, US equities premium bundle here which includes both of these together and it's $59 for the first month okay Nasdaq and edgex together but then uh, after that first month it's 119 uh, for both of them together all right okay all right any questions would you like to you know i have a a, a bunch of other equities here uh, if you have any questions uh would like to uh, let's take a look at here just let me know all 
Let me look at the banking sector, JP Morgan. Now, I mean, still not able to, none of these stocks here have been able to get back up into their uh, uh, cash uh, session open here. Uh, not yet. Okay, even Visa, let's see how Visa is doing. No, nope. none of them yet. Look at Visa though. See, this is the this is exactly what um, and we're testing this area right now around this 131, uh, 34 area here. Actually, it looks like we're gonna we're gonna trade through uh, to the downside here. Why is that? Because they're pulling here at 131, and they're showing high liquidity on the other side, and we're finding sellers here. And now, actually, someone just just now is jumping in here with um, uh, some pretty high contracts. Uh, here, here comes the move. Okay, so so uh, uh, based on just this order flow here, okay, we're looking for that this follow through here to the downside. Okay, so um, and let's see if they uh, follow through. Okay, it might be exhausting out here. And now they're starting to pull a bit on the other side. They're still here. Um, you know, around this uh, 131.50 area, as you can see. All right. Well, to get that follow through to the downside, um, I was looking for it right in here. Uh, we're right back up into the range, though. So uh, this was um, this looked good right in this area here. Uh, but uh, actually now, if, uh, if the buyers step in on the other side, um, then uh, uh, we can get back up into maybe this 131.60-something uh, 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 area up here. Hmm. Yeah, now they're pulling uh, here. So uh, it looked really good here uh, for that moment. Uh, high liquidity, uh, getting aggressive at 131, then pulling down here. Uh, starting to find some sellers. At the, now it's a little more convoluted. Uh, they've, they've pulled uh, on both sides, basically. If they mean business, they'll stay in the book. Okay, And that's the insight that you're going to get. So they're just, both are not sure right now. Uh, and um, buyers are, are not too sure. Sellers are not too sure. I don't have the uh, notes or bonds up, uh, Mario, um, but uh, I mean, uh, yeah, we look at, uh, you know, mostly futures in the um, uh, advanced order flow webinars. And okay, mostly the stock indexes, though, sometimes crude, a little bit of gold, uh, sometimes some equities as well. When, when, uh, when, you know, like I mentioned, uh, uh, you know, something's going on. Uh, some really nice examples of some things or, uh, uh, you know, maybe some uh, correlations or this sp specific questions they have for the, those markets. Okay, well, let's see what else is going on here. So I'm sorry, this was, that was Visa. Um, let's see, where's the, uh, how's that JP Morgan doing? Okay, trading right into high liquidity here, both sides though. So you can see both sides here. So we don't really we don't really have any insight on this one here. And they're they're battling it out here um, on on both sides, uh, bid and offer, very aggressive. How about Netflix? Netflix is bullish. Definitely. All right, let's see these guys sweep the, the book here on Netflix up through 152. Next target would be up here at uh, uh, one or 352.50. Okay, and let's see if these guys transact here at this um, 
Are they going to absorb here at 152? They've been waiting there all day. Yep. Okay. They're 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 uh, they're still staying in the book. We see the transactions take place. All right. Well, let, let's see. Reading this here, uh, bullish move here. Look at a lot of selling actually here. Let's zoom in a little bit. Okay, uh, we can even open our cumulative volume delta down here. Uh, here's our, our bullish move to the upside here, as you can see. Uh, and then uh, up in this area here, like uh, it's been back and forth. You know, there's some buying that just popped in, there's some selling uh, that came in on the other side, actually a little bit more uh, to drop it down lower. Okay, right up into this area of high liquidity, they they were not able to to uh, trade through it. So let's see now if uh, if the sellers are going to come in. And if they do, uh, looking for uh, yeah, down uh, basically down around here, around this uh, uh, three fifty one area. And we're just kind of in a range here, small, very small range for the last 10 minutes or so. All right, here comes an attack up here. Now it's not a lot of buying pressure. And they're starting to, uh, you know, lift the offer, but it's on very light volume here. All right, now let's see if the buyers, here they are, right back up into our high liquidity. Okay, they take them on. Okay, so now they're, now we know we found the buyers here. Okay, so we traded into it and, and uh, we're not able to uh, go through. They absorbed it. Now we're trading through it, looking for the uh, higher area here at uh, 352.50. Okay, they've also flipped here. You can see them flip on uh, from three from the uh, offer on 352 to the bid side. Uh, and uh, just looking for a bit more buying here. And uh, we can come up into this uh, uh, 352.50 area. Okay. Looks good. Pretty strong buying here. This this auction looks pretty good. So, yep, yep that's what I'd be targeting. Uh, maybe we can make it up into the next level at uh, 353. And let's zoom out here a bit. Actually, uh, so I take that back. Looks like uh, this has been bullish most of the day here. Uh, is Netflix. It's definitely above uh, its, um, uh, its swing from the open. All right. Well, how about setting some orders in here? I want to show that you can trade from the bookmap chart uh, as well. Okay, uh, set 500, let's say. Uh, and um, oh, you can use OCO orders, bracketed orders, uh, trailing stops as well. <clears throat> let's say you're looking for a, a move back down to where we broke from here. You can click here uh, and uh, uh, set your uh, your orders to uh, to buy uh, if you're looking for a pullback here. Okay, now we've our initial target was uh, this uh, 352 um, 50. We've traded through that, looking for that 353 area here, uh, and it is approaching it. So let's see if we can just get a little more follow through. It looks good. It is a strong auction. Um, so uh, <coughs> yeah, th this is the target here at uh, at 353. Okay. Now the beauty of um, 
uh, trading from uh, from the chart here and setting some of these orders uh, is um, uh, you know you can move them around as well uh, and you can see um, you know all of your action here uh, you can see that uh, well I, I entered here I stayed in the book here uh, for this amount of time and then I moved and this is all my action here Okay, we can cancel that as well. Uh, we can um, uh, set bracketed orders here. Okay, so this is just for a demo purpose. We're back down to where we initiated here, or this little kind of sideways action. So uh, let's uh, uh, let's let's get down a little bit further here. Okay, and then uh, let's see if we can uh, maybe jump in on that buy side. Whoops! All right, hold on a minute here. I, I need to reset these. These are for futures here. Uh, let's uh, let's flatten this. Okay, we're missing our move. Um, all right, let's put uh, something like this. Okay, and let's see, liquidity-wise, maybe we can we should lower this a bit. Let's just go for 100 shares. Okay, look for a little bit of a pullback. All right, I'm going to set a buy stop, actually, and see if we can uh, uh, get get triggered here on the buy side. Waiting for more more buyers to step in to lift the offer here, and then I'll go along with that uh, uh, that that amount of buying here. Again, like uh, you know, uh, risk, risk disclaimer. Let's just go over this is just for the demo purpose. Okay. Yeah, trading equities and futures involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Okay. And let's take a look here. Well, we didn't get uh, triggered into that uh, yet. Okay, let's lower it down a little bit. Okay, well, I'm waiting. See, see what I'm uh, how I'm managing this here is like I'm waiting for uh, those buyers to step in, and we're not finding them yet, right? Uh, we're back down to almost where we broke from here at 352. And let's see if the buyers step in here. Okay, now if they do, I'm just going to move this down even more aggressively. Here they come. There I go. I'm filled. Okay, I got slipped a little bit, as you can see, because it's a buy stop. Okay, I'm, I'm long 100. And here's my... Um, uh, uh, stop loss and here's my take profit up here I'm going to front run this high liquidity up here at uh, at 353 okay and uh, let's see here now on this move uh, the way that uh, I'm looking at it is th they should support this move uh, the buyers uh, to the upside here okay so if it comes down below this 352 area I'm out right uh, and uh, so I'm going to move it up there uh, to about 351.90 um, uh, and lower, lower my risk a bit. All right, let's see if these uh, buyers start to support this. If they don't, uh, I'll be taken out down uh, down at this uh, uh, 351.90. Okay, starting to move up. I'm going to move my stop up as well. Uh, and uh, because now they're supporting it up here at 352.25. Okay, looking for those aggressive buyers to lift the offer and target higher liquidity up here at 353. Okay, it's only 100 shares, but uh, 
uh, you know, this this concept that we're going through here uh, is um, uh, can be used on much higher time frames as well. Okay, but this is just for the demo. All right, guys, let's see those buyers up here. Let's see them reach that target and uh, breach the uh, top with some good, strong buying volume. Okay, they're also, see them lift the, uh, or raise the, uh, I'm gonna front run or hide my stop behind that as well here. So now I'm it's break even plus, so I'll definitely get at least something out of it. Uh, but this is what I'm looking at here at uh, 352.50. Uh, they're uh, showing higher liquidity. They want to be buyers here. And now they're actually starting to pull. Okay, starting to find some sellers now. Anyway, any questions that you guys have? We got to we got to wrap it up here. Uh, we've been going over an, just about an hour here, uh, an hour and uh, uh, five minutes or so. So, um, just wanted to show you you can trade from the chart here. How you can manage your trades. Uh, how all of this is recorded as well. You can go back and replay all of this data uh, as well. Uh, and um, uh, all of this can ha happen in your Interactive Brokers uh, uh, trade trader account. Okay, here comes our another push back up there, looking for those buyers. Where where are they uh, to uh, lift this higher? Uh, and um, just not quite finding them up here, not yet. Here they come. That's what we're looking for. There it is, target reached. Uh, you can see right into 353, beautiful stuff right there. That's why we front. Uh, ran this uh, higher liquidity here because uh, it was absorbed. Uh, that's why we didn't place it right at 353. Now it may go higher here and, and come up and, uh, through uh, these areas here, but uh, we're looking to get uh, uh, you know uh, 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 taken taken out uh, right here uh, beforehand. Oh, I don't know what the commission was. This is demo, um, but. Um, uh, anyway, uh, you know, I mean, it's a hundred shares. It, you know, it wasn't much uh, here, uh, but um, uh, anyway, you, you guys, you guys get the idea of what, uh, uh, you know, how how you can place your trades, uh, how you can manage them, uh, since you have the liquidity here in front of you, um, you know, looking looking for those areas as uh, as your targets, right? And, and putting together this context of this really kind of nice bullish move to the upside that we saw take place at uh, at this 352, right? And then um, uh, starting to target areas of at 353. Now it was only 100 shares because my initial one for 500 in, 500 out, um, uh, was set with a um, uh, futures uh, uh, setting of not 90 and 64, but like six and uh, four or something like that, right? Well, that's four cents. Well, the, the, the spread of this is bigger than four cents. The spread of this is actually uh, uh, what um, is like 20, this, this spread is like 20 cents here, okay? So anyway, uh, user error on that, pro on that, um, that example. All right, it looks like they still want to trade through this 353. Lots of uh, you know buying up here, uh, and uh, maybe we'll get the push through it. But uh, uh, they they haven't quite made it yet. Haven't quite made it yet. Still 4,100 contracts up here or shares. I don't know, John. What what do you get charged uh, for your uh, your commission? 
something like, uh, you know, is it uh, seven bucks, 10 bucks, something like that? Is it, e is it each side? So is it 20 bucks overall? Is it, uh, so if I traded a thousand shares here, um, it would have been 20 bucks still the same. But anyway, um, a lot of traders that we've uh, dealt with are also trading options uh, using Bookmap. Okay, so they'll be looking at these areas here, uh, and um, uh, and then getting in on on the option side. Oh, each side is ten bucks. Okay. Okay, regardless of share size, right? Okay, so let's say we went for that original. Um, uh, you know, 500, um, you know, 500 shares on each side. Boy, that, that's, I mean, that's pretty high for this, um, for, for Netflix. But, uh, yeah, you could have jumped in on the option side. No, no problem at all. Okay. Another thing, um, we, we, we've got to, we've got to wrap it up here. Uh, so get your questions in. Uh, but um, uh, another thing about the options trades uh, that that's something that's really, really nice um, is, um, you know, here I'm going with the trend, right? So it's the the vega in your options is already going to be pretty high, you know, your volatility uh, uh, Greek, right? So, you know, you're not going to get too much of a pop out of your option. Uh, but uh, when you start to see areas of high liquidity totally absorbed uh, and then you see sellers come in on the other side, Let's say a, a, a huge amount of sellers come in here at 352.50 here in Netflix, right? We just we you know we, we did not make it through 353. We're seeing it starting to exhaust here a little bit. And what if, right? We see just a massive amount of selling here. Well, go into your options and uh, uh, you know you can uh, uh, you know buy some puts or sell some calls or do a vertical spread, whatever it is you want to do. Uh, but um, uh, because it's already so high and the Vega is already quite high on this, man, it's not going to take much. Uh, once this starts to move back down uh, and, and you're in on that side, this is going to be a pretty nice move uh, on your option. Okay. And you'll see those, those shifts and change take place all the time. Okay. Well, instead of, you know, it was down here where we wanted to see um, – uh, more selling, right? Well, what happened? Well, we exhausted out on that sell side here. You can see it we, here as well as here. Okay, we saw some selling here that look, started to look pretty good, uh, but uh, they absorbed it basically here. Uh, and uh, and then they got more aggressive here to, to skew it into a higher area, looking for the next uh, level here on liquidity. Looks pretty good. Um, ah, I, mean, I, just, I just got long again. Oh, boy. Okay, so uh, that was a, that was an error. I, um, let's flatten that. Okay. Anyway, uh, you um, you get the idea uh, that uh, yeah we're still we're still bullish, looking for higher and higher liquidity here. Next level is up here at three fifty three fifty. Okay. Anyway, let's wrap it up. Thanks for coming, guys. Uh, and um, uh, you can always reach out. Uh, to me at uh, bruce at bookmap.com uh, if you have any questions regarding this, okay? Okay, thanks for coming. Uh, take care.